Her an inspiring novelist and a lover of literature. She recently graduated from State with an MA. Her poems can be found in Lo is that is that Locus? Locus. Locus. The Arts and Literary Magazine. I almost read the Ants and Literary Magazine. <laughs> She is currently writing historical fiction about a 13-year-old Japanese-American boy who sticks it to the man by escaping internment. Interesting story, not that interesting, but a story about Sylvia is that I was a GIA in a class with her uh, in her undergrad. Now, she's all grown up. <laughs> I said I was going to do this. sweater over it. Would you like some cookies and milk? My husband loved cookies and milk. He was just a big kid, I suppose. Since war began, sugar was more and more difficult to get a hold of with rationing. Water formed in my mouth at the thought. I sat on the salmon-colored velour couch in the living room, which had a tiny square window that looked over the street. Below, cars rolled by, and people's heads were black circles moving in different directions. I could see our apartment window from it, and the clearing where we played war. On the coffee table was a Japanese lucky cat ornament, painted black on its ears and black and white in front. It had its left paw in the air, which went up and down when I touched it. I bought that on my last trip to Osaka. She placed a teal blue tray with white trim on the coffee table. I reached over and took a cookie. It was good, but a bit dry. I took a sip of milk. Mrs. Tanaka, I'm here to apologize. She picked up a cookie. Words are just words, aren't they? It was fun at the time. I realized that we not only offended you, and that's the true reason of my visit. But drew symbols that have many terrible meanings. She took a bite of the cookie, swallowed, and looked at me. Well, that's all nice and well. You're afraid I'll tell your parents, aren't you? I lowered my eyes to the floor and folded my hands on my lap. 
It's just that I've already done something to deserve being grounded, and if they find out, I won't be able to leave the house for a full month. <laughs> Do you like tea? Yes, but lovely. Hold that thought and I'll be right back. I stood up and looked out the window. In the clearing below, Lois and my sister drew lines with chalk for hopscotch. I waved, but they didn't see me. On the wall next to the window was a photograph of a 20-something man in a khaki suit. One of his eyes was milky, like Jack Miota, whose left eye was replaced with a glass one. Footsteps approached the living room. Beside the photo was a necklace made out of shells. The middle one was a banded tulip with a mix of pale pink, white, and dark gray swirling into its curve. Some shells, especially the more delicate, thin ones, were broken, creating a sharp tooth effect. Seashells in the shape of three quarters of the sun in peach tones pierced through the leather string the color of the coffee. My best friend Yuko gave that to me. We collected shells on a shore half a mile away from my home. We found these following the biggest and most devastating storm. Thankfully, our homes were saved, but many were flattened by the torrents and angry winds. I touched the rib texture of the tulip shell. It was too small to hold up to my ear and hear waves, but I could imagine the salty seaweed air. It's funny how something beautiful can emerge from misery. I knew Mrs. Tanaka was from Okinawa Prefecture, a collection of islands at the most southern tip of Japan. But I didn't know about the language restrictions the Japanese government enforced upon them. Unlike the Okinawan, we weren't told to wear a tag that read Hogan Fuda around our necks. We didn't need to wear a necklace. Our existence on this soil justified the distorted caricature. That same spring, Yuko and I discovered a nest of turtle eggs on the beach, too close to the shore. When the winds roared, the waves reached 20 feet high and would have crashed down on the eggs, swept them away to be eaten by soulless fishes. I leaned in. We wondered if Mama Turtle had been frightened away by a dog or a person and hurried away before she could bury her delicate spirits. Little translucent balls of light. I took another bite of my cookie. Yuko had always wanted a turtle, but her mother forbid it, saying that they stank. We used our hands to dig a hole in the sand. The layer underneath the surface was damp and cold sticking to our fingertips as we dug and dug. She curved her lined fingers and dug in the air. Yuko and I carefully placed the eggs inside. We checked them until one day we noticed a hole where we had dug and tiny prints crawling towards the sea. On the tray were foil-covered chocolate eggs and steam rose from the teapot. She offered me a chocolate which she had saved from Easter. I unwrapped the shiny purple foil and put the piece in my mouth. Buttery cocoa spread along my tongue as it melted. I let the chocolate liquid linger in my mouth for as long as I could before swallowing. Tea? Mrs. Tanaka placed a rough textured handleless cup in front of me and poured green tea inside. The clock on the bookcase read 3.35. If I didn't leave soon, playtime would be over. Thank you for the cookies and chocolates, Mrs. Tanaka. I better get going. You're leaving already? But you haven't even touched your tea. I know. You'd like some more chocolate. Let me go get the candy dish. I debated whether or not to make up a fib about having homework or eating supper early because Oh, G Chan planned to tune into his favorite radio show. <laughs> All right, I'll get the candy dish. After I came back, she went on about her grandson. Is that him? I asked. 
pointing to the photo by the window. Yes, that's Wei. Such a sweet boy. He doesn't visit much since he moved to Ohio. He wrote me a letter. Would you like to hear it? She stood up to get the letter. My mom takes being on time for dinner very seriously, I said and put my jacket on. Mrs. Tanaka's shoulders slumped forward. Her eyes looked down and toward me, their pleading look further emphasized by the thick lenses of her glasses. It's my fault. You didn't get any chores done. I get talking and don't know when to stop. Chores? I had forgotten about the actual purpose of my visit. However, I did spend an hour and 15 minutes listening to her stories and being polite, so I figured I should be forgiven. <laughs> uh, we had a nice visit, didn't we? Oh, yes. Well, I can't deny it. Great, so we're even. My hand wrapped around the doorknob. And now, hold on, young man. Our agreement was that I wouldn't tell your parents about the swastika if you helped me with chores. Yes, but, no buts. Be here the same day next week, then we'll be even.